Salutations and good morrow, everyone, and welcome back to another Grounded video where today we are going to be answering your guys' questions and testing myths that you guys have asked me to go out and do. And one of the first ones that we are going to do today is we are going to run over to the magnifying glass that is a little bit outside of the current buildable area, and we're going to see, one, if it lights your character on fire, and two, if it will actually light bases on fire. Because if that's so, there could be changes that happen later on in the game where if somebody happens to come over and pick up the magnifying glass, maybe you can move it maybe you can shrink it and use it yourself but we don't know so i figured i'd run over there and we'd test it out so i'm going to get on over there right now and then we're going to see what happens when we're there Okay guys, here we are at the magnifying glass. Now, with this magnifying glass, you guys can already see some smoke coming up. So, what we're going to test is whether or not, one, if we take damage from walking into the area where it's smoking, two, if buildings take damage from being there, and if three, if you can actually combust if you stay in there too long. So, let's check that out right now. I'm going to go ahead and stand in there first to see if we do end up taking damage. Oh, yep, we definitely, definitely take damage from that. Okay, good to know. All right, let's get a floor built here. Let's try putting down a floor and a wall. That's what we're going to try to do here. So floor, uh, like, uh, it's a little hard to see, but we're going to put that down there. And then a wall as well. Just um, basic wall. Just like, um, let's, let's try just like that, okay? And we're just going to go ahead and build this guy up. Okay, and see what happens. I might need a little bit more grass plank. Thank God I brought some extra axes with me. Okay. So, I can't tell if the floor is actually taking damage. So it doesn't look like maybe if I put another floor up. Like this, maybe. Okay, let's try that. I may need to grab a couple more grass planks. Maybe just because it's partially hidden underground at the moment. Boom! Boom! Okay, let's let's try this out. Does that actually do it? Um, I can't tell whether or not this floor is taking damage. It's definitely that is very bright. It's definitely not lighting on fire, sadly. Do you light on fire though if you stand in it too long? You do not light on fire. At all. Nope, you just take a lot of damage and you die. So that one is completely busted. The myth of being able to be lit on fire over here from this. I mean the smoke is starting to turn red. But I don't know if it's always been red, so I don't think anything's actually going to light on fire. I'm not sure. I'll give it a couple minutes, and we'll see if anything happens. Okay, guys, so a couple minutes later, and nothing has changed. The smoke is still red, yes, but now the uh, glass has stopped producing heat, and it's safe to stand over here. So that one is completely busted. It will hurt you, but you do not light on fire, and it does not destroy your bases if you're over there. So you guys may be able to use this as a trap in the future but it's not going to actually kill you let's move on to another myth you guys wanted me to test and that is if i fall holding a dandelion okay if i fall down holding a dandelion and i'm holding it and then i let go of it will i still keep feather falling so let's test that one we're going to go back to a familiar map of mine if you guys haven't seen it already when i built up over 1000 spaces into the sky so we're going to go check that map out again Okay guys, here we are back at our very, very large tower that we built so long ago to check to see how high you can actually build in the game. Now I will tell you that this tower is over 1,111 clay blocks tall. Okay, so it is massive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to admin command myself to teleport up to the top of it, or as close to the top as I can, and then I'm going to pull out my dandelion tuft and I'm going to use it, and then I'm going to put it away to see if I start falling quickly again. Now I am in creative, so I'm not actually gonna take damage, but as we can tell, if you start falling quickly, you will end up taking damage. So let's teleport up to the top here. Okay guys, so here we are at the top of this giant, giant, giant tower. Well, I'm actually not at the top. It goes up further, but I thought that this would be a good spot to test. You can see very, very far. You guys can see the entire backyard, the very blocky hedges that are over there. This nice oak tree we have and everything over here that will soon be added, including what's going to be going on in that garden over there. This nice stump, a wonderful little uh, place that I'm building a base actually right underneath that picnic table. And also this nice grill and the shed who, which who knows what all is going to be inside of these areas. By the way, if you guys do want to get up here, it's not that hard. You just have to climb this brick path by going through there. But let's jump off of here and let's pull out our glider. I will show you guys I have nothing else in my inventory right now. 
Okay, only, well, I have some stuff in my inventory, but nothing else equipped. So we're going to jump off now, and we're going to start falling. All right. Max, you're falling pretty quick. Now, I don't normally use Max for my playthroughs. I just happen to use Max in order to do this, this jump. But it looks like we're falling down at a pretty quick pace. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the old uh, dandelion tuft now. Okay. We've fallen to a point where you're pretty much falling down very, very slowly. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. And yeah, you just start falling super quick right away again. And last check, can you hurt? Yeah, you can actually slow down and take no damage if you activate your dandelion tuft at the last second. That was awesome. As a bonus to you guys, I, I'm going to go ahead and just teleport myself all the way up to the top and do another fall for you guys just for fun. So let's get up there real quick. And we're going to fall. Oop, I fell through the map. Never mind, I broke it. Okay, guys, this is bringing us to our next test. As you guys can see, I tried to contain my soldier ants here inside of my little uh, arena area that I had made before, but it looks as though that that is not going to be possible to do that. So what the test is, is I want to see whether or not 10 soldier ants can take out a wolf spider. So I'm going to spawn in a wolf spider right now, and we're going to see what all damage the wolf spider is going to do to all of these soldier ants. Now, I don't know if the soldier ants are going to be able to take out the wolf spider just because it's going to be so much damage, right at once but we'll have to see okay mr wolf spider come on then attack the attack the ants attack the ants here let's get rid of this wall i think he's stuck in the wall i think the wolf spider is actually being attacked by the ants already the wolf spider is okay the wolf spider got knocked out holy moly i mean this wasn't a complete fair test because the wolf spider was stuck in a wall for a little bit because it looks like that they're not even being able to do any damage to the, the soldier ants. Now, the soldier ants, a lot of them are more interested in taking out the actual base and then fighting the uh, the wolf spider. But what it appears, unless, unless he's attacking it. Here, let's try to give the wolf spider a hand by leading more of these ants to him. I don't think he's even going to be able to get down one of the ants. There's too many ants for him. They keep knocking him silly. Look at his health fall. Okay, so 10 soldier ants will be able to kill a wolf spider. That is so crazy. Look at this. Wow. 10 soldier ants definitely took out a wolf spider. You know, while we're here, seeing how none of the spiders died, let's just spawn in another one for fun. Let's just get it in here really quick and see if it has more of a fighting chance if it doesn't get stuck right off the bat. Okay, he's really salty with me to start with. But I'm going to get him on over here. Get this wall out of the way. Okay, so he definitely took out the soldier ant. If it's one at a time, he'll definitely take them out. Come on, Mr. Wolf Spider. Bring it on. Here, let's punch these guys. Get them all mad at me. Get them all nice and angry with me. Come on. Now come with me over here. And let's fight this wolf spider. Are you stuck? No, you're not stuck. Okay. Well, they all seem to be fighting now. But will they keep fighting him? Nope, they're all just standing there. Okay, well, I guess that solves the question, guys. Will a wolf spider get defeated by 10 soldier ants? Yes, it will. Hands down, every time, yes, it will. All right, let's move on to my next test, which is going to be whether or not you can build a base that's on top of the water. If you can build an entire base on top of the water by just putting down one plank on the outside. So let's check it out. And also whether or not the base will just start to fall into the water at some point. Because technically building on top of the water is going to be the safest place for you to build. So if you could get yourself some way to build like this. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, here we go. If you could build yourself a base like this, right? Where you just have... Ooh, ooh, we have a spot where we had to stop? No, we're good. Okay. So in other words, if you just keep building out, you could build yourself a bridge that goes all the way across the water, actually. So this might actually be a good idea for some of you guys that are having problems with the water if you guys want to get across the water without um, anything else. But it looks like, yes, you will be able to build however long you want to across the water. Now, I will err on the side of caution stating if you destroy that first piece, I'm just going to go ahead and keep building, whatever. Um, that if you destroy that first piece that leads out to your, oops, I, and I fell in. 
that leads to your bridge over there that you will end up destroying your entire bridge. So you guys are going to want to be careful with that, especially if you guys have ants or anything trying to bug your stuff because you will have them destroy it and then your entire bridge will collapse and your entire base will collapse. But it looks like it is 100% possible to build as large of a base as you want. Now this gives me a really good idea that maybe I can do in a future stream is can I cover the entire base in leaves? We'll have to see. But guys, that is cool. Let's move on to a, another good old question that I have that's going to be the last one that I have for this stream and for this video and that is whether or not you can build a base on top of the haze, right? So in other words, does the haze go infinitely into the air or can I go up and can I build a base on top of it? Let's go check that out. Okay guys, so what I've done is I have got myself up on top of the porch. Okay, you guys can see here, here's the giant house. We're up on top of the porch now. And if you guys look, there are some cracks here that I'm assuming you will be able to fall into later on in the game when it's more developed. But what I want to test today is whether or not you could take a base. Now, I'm going to start from on top of the porch and build up because it's just an easier way to start and build up over there. But see, okay, here we are. We're starting to get into the fog right now. So we're going to start back up over here a little bit more where we get out of that fog. Okay, guys, so here I am now in the fog. I built a very, very, very janky staircase leading up just to do a test here really quick. And what it appears is that you actually can build a base that goes on top of the fog because as you're walking you can start to see that it's starting to get foggy underneath your character and then what i'm going to do to test here let's get rid of this guy right here boop get rid of him and now what i'm going to do while i'm looking inside of pete's wonderful face is i'm going to build some floors okay and i'm gonna start just building some floors out this way over in the direction that we know that there's definitely more fog and we'll see if we could keep getting up above it because right now it looks like yes we will be able to build above the fog which means if you guys wanted to build a base up here right and you guys were just worried like oh well uh, i don't know if i'm gonna get killed by the poison or i want to be ready for when the maybe the haze base opens up this is a great way to do it this is also really kind of a cheese way to get on top of the insect killer also or the weed be gone but I will say it is 100% possible to build on top of the fog. As I jump down in here, you guys will see all of a sudden it starts to get poisony. It starts to get hazy and we are now in the haze. So yes, it is 100% possible to build on top of the haze. These are some of the questions that you guys have asked me in the past live streams or some myths you guys have asked me to bust. And I am very happy to report that I've been able to do all of them. If you guys have more of those questions or if you guys have more tests you guys would like to see me do, please leave them down in the comments i'd love to try out more things i have a list already of i'm going to be going on to that has to do with um, some of the different weapons that has to do with some of the different armor and the benefits that you get from them so if you guys want to see that make sure you guys subscribe and hit that bell icon to let me know you guys want to see some more and also don't forget to like the video and as always guys i'll see all of you guys in the next one